start to the year, how do you help them kind of stay confident in, in the rehab process and, and getting back into the swing of things? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that it's as much about confidence right now. It's just doing everything we can do. Unfortunately, with a broken bone, there's less that you're capable of doing. Um, but I do think, you know, to the extent that whatever you're capable of doing, um, I know he'll he'll do it. Whether at what point he can begin to you know, work on the cardio and all those different things that, that will present themselves. And, just you know, try to be patient. It's not much you can do other than that. And I, I don't think he'll he'll lose confidence. I, I hope that's not the case. If he does, we'll, we'll address that. But you know, he shouldn't. You know, there's always a you know a reintegration process, but I, I don't I don't see that being that significant you know, with what he's been doing. Had a six-game playoff series. I'm sorry. You and the Celtics had a yeah. six-game playoff series. How, how did that kind of inform, you know, how you prepared for this year, adjusted off, you know, kind of the half season you had, and how have you seen the Celtics evolve into, you know, their second year in your job? Um, you know, I, I try not to. I'm not going to make generalizations about other teams. Um, we, we've the, any time the, the playoffs do help you learn about your team and I think playing an opponent that is as formidable as, as they are and, and were um, I, I think for us that you know, the, the analysis of our group like kind of encompassed more than the playoffs uh, but, but clearly <clears throat> that series was one that, you know, that we will learn from going forward I think right now um, this team is you know, although we have the same roster by and large, it, it is a new team and it is a new year. And uh, you know, to the extent we saw certain flashes of things that we want to do more of or want to do better, you know, the playoffs always point point out your weaknesses and your strengths. How much does it help to have that full summer? And then Joe got hired pretty quickly too going into the season. You come in late, like you know, just what does that allow you to do in terms of preparation? I mean, again, every situation is different. You know, if you had ten new players, your, your preparation is different uh, for the summer. And you're reintegrating new people. Um, you know, I, I think in our situation, um, you know, it, it's hard to compare the two. I know, um, you know, speaking for myself, you know, a big part of it was putting your staff together. You know, and, and that that process takes time. And it, it's so important um, because that. You know, it's not just you as the head coach, but it's your whole group that that is coaching the team. And you do have a chance to be around the guys more. And there's limits to what you can do from a basketball standpoint during the summer, um, just from just the time that's allotted to you. Um, but I do think you have a chance to, to plan. And that's a big part of it. And some of the things you plan, you, you have to make assumptions. And um, you really, that adaptation process is, is ongoing throughout the year. You know, Coach, along those lines, uh, the news of Chris Porzingis uh, not playing tonight for the Celtics, how did that change things for you guys? I mean, obviously Drew Holiday wasn't a part right. of that series, so he's available tonight. But just how does that change uh, what the Celtics have been doing without Chris Stapps now? Yeah, to be honest with you, um, we prepared like everybody's playing. That's usually kind of how you go about it. And um, our focus a little bit right now is more on how we're going to adapt, finding out what we found out today about Jalen and how we adjust to that. And, um, that's not going to be just one game. Um, that's going to be over the course of a period of time. And, um, I, I think you can't dwell on that either. You know, you kind of take the reality of the situation you're in. And in this case, obviously, I don't have to. Stubbs is a good player. <laughs> and he can shoot the ball and gives him rim protection. But I, I don't know that it, it, it fundamentally changes the game. Do you get stops defensively? Um, you know, Boston is an elite defense, um, and particularly with their their size and their you know, their versatility defensively. So I, I think for us, it's a, it's a constant, regardless of who we're playing. If we can, um, you know, get out and uh, get some easy baskets, get some open shots in transition, that's something. That, you know, a lot of teams want to do. Um, I think for us, it's an important part of who we are, and 
you can't do that unless you play defense and get stops and take care of the ball. Was this week like an anomaly in terms of defensively? You know, I know that the shopping ball in the end was amazing, but um, is that something you're big picture defense on? Yeah, any time. It's hard to say. You know, if we give up 150 points next week again, um, but you do you you look at it um, as you, as you said. You know, there were some teams that played well offensively. Um, you, it's good to look at the things that you did and and what you did. It's not just a hot player. You know, I think there are, there are things that you learn about teams and players as you guard them. Um, you know, that's part of the process, but um, some, uh, frankly, there were some things that we did defensively that were okay. You know, and you, you have to be careful. I, the first possession of our Brooklyn game, we played great defense for 24 seconds and didn't really hit a contested turnaround three and got the bottom of the net. And you can't overreact to that, but there's other ones that guys are getting open looks and you know, aren't contested. And, you know, just put your hand up, you know, and, if you do that 20 times, you got a better chance than if you do it 10 times. So for us, I think being granular about our defensive habits is really important. And it's hard to hold, you know, if there's 10 things we want to do better, it's hard to hold all 10 of them in your conscious mind if they're not habitual. So you just chip away at it gradually. And sometimes when you struggle in a given area, it creates more urgency. Um, and that's, that urgency sometimes can, can overcome having something that's not instinctive or habitual yet.